Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're gonna to talk about big audio upgrades for your garage on a small budget. One of the biggest struggles in your garage, all right, well this sounds terrible, can't say that. <laughs> Something I struggled with in my garage was that I was using the TV behind me here for like a stereo basically. I'd put on YouTube, turn it way up so I could hear it in the back corner of the garage when I'm doing stuff. And what I strongly disliked about that was that every time I'd come to grab a tool, ah! I had some donkey screaming at me because this thing was cranked ah! way up. When I was searching for answers on what people were using for a garage stereo, I came across a lot of people recycling or upcycling old surround sound systems. Like this. But no Bluetooth, so we don't want that. I ended up with something that gave me killer sound, all for under 200 bucks Canadian. This is Bluetooth connectivity, the receiver's built into the sub, and you got five speakers. So stick around, I'm going to show you what I went with, why I went with it, and why I think you should too. So this here is the Logitech Z606 5.1 surround sound with Bluetooth. We're gonna open the box and see what this thing consists of. One thing I noticed right here, they actually put all the install instructions right on the box. Here's a subwoofer, little auxiliary to 3.5 headphone jack cord. These will have all our speakers in it. So the speakers are actually quite a fair size. They come with a length of speaker wire on each. These are the rears. These come with a 20 foot long rear speaker wire attached to them. Right, front left, rear, rear, and our center channel. What I really like about this is that the receiver is built into the subwoofer. It gives you a nice compact way of setting this thing up. Speaker wires, no fancy plugs, just your regular clips, which is great because the Samsung one I had, had like proprietary plugs and cables, which I lost so I couldn't use that. Here's the five independent speakers that it comes with and the subwoofer. So all of your controls are right here on the front. Buttons have a nice little feel to them. Here's what I'll be using to control it. I'm gonna say 99% of the time. This little remote, which is awesome because you can just slip this in your pocket. You don't even know it's there. Little RCA to headphone jack. So I think if I put the sub up there, the receiver is a nice straight shot. It could reach, you know, it's kind of midway between my laptop and the TV. Um, for Bluetooth, it should, should work just fine. The remote will work just fine from anywhere in the garage. That's basically where it's gonna go. Now, for the speaker placement, basically what I wanna have is just an even sound throughout the garage as an end result. Uh, I guess I could put them in each corner as that might be the way to go. I've also thought about maybe mounting them right in the ceiling, just drilling a, a hole saw, put the speaker there and put a white speaker grill over it. You wouldn't really see it. However, I feel like I could start with the walls and if I don't like how they came out, it's just a little screw hole. You're not gonna see it when I remove them and I can put them in the ceiling after. If I were to mount it straight, it points up, which I don't like. So what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and put a screw in just enough so that it will grab and this will just kind of hang off it and prop itself up against the wall. And like I said, if, uh, if it doesn't work out, I just have a little hole there. Nobody's really gonna notice. Okay, so that kind of sits nice. It doesn't point up. So I did the same thing over on this side. I just put a screw into the trim and then I just tucked my wire in along the top edge of this trim. As you can see here, this is just siding. So it's nice and flexible. So I'm able to do this. Otherwise, I would just pull off a couple screws that I have this thing tacked to the studs with and then I'd be able to remove it, run my wiring because there's a gap at the top that I left just in case I needed to run more electrical for outlets or uh, this kind of stuff. So I'm just laying out some speaker wire here, all along here, to see where I need, how far I need to run it all along the top here and drop it down to the subwoofer or receiver, whatever you wanna call it. This side I'll need, you know, about four or five feet to go across and down, and then the fronts will be done. Doesn't look too bad, so I got my length figured out for my speaker wire, a little snip here, and I'm just gonna cut right there, pull them apart, got my wire strippers, boom. Boom. This tool, super, super awesome. This dust, not so much. Turn this guy on. This is a 12 volt Milwaukee soldering iron. Wicked, wicked tool. That will go red when it's ready or solid or something. I haven't used it in a while, so I forget. Okay, so there it's solid. It's ready to rock. 
So I've got some shrink tube that I'm gonna put over the wires so that I can do this one and done thing, you know what I mean? Slip that over. So I've got my shrink tube down on my wires here. There's a red line on this one. I'm gonna match that up to this red wire here. Feed my solder in there. Oh, here, check this out. Ah! Oh, that was really hot. So you can actually fold it down like that. It'll stand itself up on the battery. And then you can just rest your piece that you're soldering and feed your solder into it. Shut that off. Shows you it's red, shows you it's hot, which is friggin' sweet. I'm gonna do the red one first here. Just gonna slide my shrink tube up and over. It's not too hot there. You always wanna be careful. You don't wanna put your shrink tube up too quick because if the solder is still hot, it will um, melt the shrink tube before you get it actually all the way over. Take my little lighter thingy. A little shrink. And you don't wanna get this too hot because it will melt, right? The wire and the shrink tube itself could melt. So now that that's done, I can keep tucking this in along the top. All right, so obviously on this side, I'll need to extend that wire as well because it's only gonna reach to about here. And what I'm doing is I'm gonna run it behind the board and there's a little notch underneath there where this wire can run out. Each one, fire up, hold faithful here. Super easy to connect. You can see here, you just push your wire in, release. The center speaker, it doesn't sit, like it looks the same as the other one, so it doesn't sit sideways. If it did, it might look kind of strange. I feel like if I, oh, if I hang it up above the TV, maybe it won't look so bad, actually. Yeah, I think I'll just do that. I think that looks good. You can buy, like, you can buy fancy mounts that come out and the speaker will sit on it or whatever, but I don't think it's necessary, especially for garage. I think this is fine. Um, it will still do what I want to do and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't look terrible. We'll put it that way. You can tell me the deck is stacked. You can whisper behind my back. You can show me how the odds are up. Against me all day long But I've been through the fire And come out alive And there's no more fear in my eyes Well now I'm rising And you can bring me down So the last speaker is installed For the surround sound system What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little track on my computer here And I'll do a little walk around the garage So that you guys get a good representation Of how well the sound is distributed Throughout the building this garage is 900 square feet, 30 by 30. I'm gonna set it to volume 10 out of 30. That way it's not just super loud throughout the whole video. And you'll also be able to pick up where the volume will dip between when I move from speaker to speaker. I have the mic attached to me, so whether I'm pointing the camera at me or the speaker, the sound will be the same. I'll just hit play here and we'll do a little walk. You'll notice it is louder right in this corner, obviously because the sub is there, but not a huge deal. Some artwork that my son did, pretty sweet. So overall, really good coverage. Not blaring in one spot. It's just a nice level of volume to work with. And uh, I'm super happy with it. Sounds really good. The remote also reaches from either end of the garage, which is, like I said, 30 feet away. So I can turn it up, show you guys the quality of the sound. So this is at 15. at 20.
another cool feature. It's got a pause button. So you can pause any media playing through it. And then, uh, oh, almost forgot to show you. You can also select the volume of each channel. So you can select the front speakers, center channel, rear speakers, and the sub. They go to five. I got the rears turned up because the rears are typically quieter than the fronts. There's just, I guess, not as much power going to them or whatever. So I've turned those up so it's more even. Also, you can select, so it's just the front uh, 2.1, so like the front speakers and the sub, or 5.1, all five speakers and the sub. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it answered a lot of questions for you and uh, kind of gave you a good idea of what this system's capable of. I think this is like unbeatable, bang for the buck. It's actually really good quality sound too, so don't let the price fool you. I know there are a lot of other cheaper alternatives, but everything I read about them was that they were just not good quality or every time you shut the stereo off and turn it back on, all the settings would go back to whatever the default settings were and you'd have to start all over. This thing, so user-friendly, hooked it up to my computer, my phone, my laptop with no problems. And I am a total dummy when it comes to that stuff. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. If you found it helpful, hit the subscribe button. Really appreciate that. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.